November was here, and autumn was still hanging on, though her grip was slipping fast. Throughout the mostly gray and barren hills were leftover strips of color, and I ventured out on as many sunrises and sunsets as I could to find them. And when you found yourself in a bare section of trees, there was a certain stillness in the air. As I dedicate most of my time to capturing fall, it tends to fly by in a blur every year, and I get nostalgic come November and start thinking back to the heart of fall, like the days we spent at the cabin and Allie's pancakes that were the best I ever ate. days when the yard still had green and we were splitting whatever wood we could find. Autumn has a deep effect on my mind. Being surrounded by so much beauty, then having it flee so quickly, reminds me I am powerless to the winds of change. Sip slow the last drops of color, savor the taste and smile, for the most beautiful things in life are often ephemeral.
When I was a kid, I used to sit next to the wood stove in my parents' house. They had like a little nook right next to it where you could lean your back against the chimney. And I would always sit there and the dog would always sit on the other side. And that was just my favorite place from November to March. I think November and April are my two favorite months. There's just something about November and the slowdown, the way it starts to get dark early, everything starts to slow down. For me, October is always like a mad rush trying to capture peak fall foliage. And then November is when the relief starts to set in a bit. Also, November has great color. I love the oak trees and the beaches and all the burnt umbers and the leftover stuff. And there's a stillness. And with most of the leaves gone from the forest, you start to see different perspectives that you only see in stick season. It's really a special time of year. It's my favorite time of year to be up early. I find that in the summer, you're up so late that it's often really hard to get up early. But come winter, when less is going on, I find it easier to go to bed early and to wake up early. And recently I've been trying to get up between like four or 4.30, somewhere around there. I don't do it every single day, but I do it as often as I can. Um, one of the tricks that I have for doing it, I actually learned this from Mike Tesoro, who runs Uma Tesoro Maranara Sauce. That was one of my last real jobs before I became a photographer full-time. I worked for a pasta sauce company, a local pasta sauce company some of the best sauce you will ever buy from a store. He was my business mentor, he taught me a lot. And he was always up early and he was always up late getting things done, running his own business. I saw the blood, sweat and tears that went into making it happen on your own. And one thing he, t I would ask him, I'd be, he, we'd get into work to make the sauce together. And I, I would say, what, what time did you get up this morning? And he's, oh yeah, I was up at five, writing the business plan for the bank. And I said, how do you get up? Or, and, I, and I knew that we had been up late the last night making sauce. He said, how do you get up early? He said, feet on the floor. You gotta get your feet onto the floor. You can't lay in bed and hit snooze or anything like that. You have to get up out of bed, put your feet on the floor. Even if you're wicked tired, it's the first step in actually getting up. And so what I do is, I don't leave my phone near my bed. I don't think that's a good thing to do anyway. I leave my phone downstairs with the alarm. So when the alarm goes off, I ha it wakes me up and I have to go downstairs and turn it off. Once you're downstairs in the kitchen, you're pretty much already up. And like this morning, for example, I was tired. It was 4.30, I was definitely tired, but I, I was like, just stay up, you know you can. And then 10 o'clock, while well, even like nine o'clock rolls around, suddenly you've got a half day of work under your belt. The one thing that makes it challenging for me is I do find it hard to fall asleep. My mind is always racing. So on nights when I have a hard time shutting my brain off and I know that I'm not gonna be able to go upstairs and go right to sleep, I'll drink Beam Dream Powder. This stuff is amazing. Beam is this video's sponsor. I've told you about them before. This is, this is real deal stuff. Super simple, really high quality. It's basically like a nighttime hot chocolate that helps you fall asleep. But it's not some gimmick. It's clinically shown to improve your sleep. While it's a hot cocoa, it's only got 15 calories. There's no added sugar. This one is their limited edition flavor for the holidays. This one has THC free CBD powder, has reishi mushroom, has L-theanine, magnesium, and melatonin. All of these ingredients promote better sleep on their own, but when you combine them together, you get dream powder. Kind of when I started going off on my own and starting my own business, I, I began noticing that I had trouble sleeping. I've tried a lot of different sleep aids over the years. Nothing's even close to Beam. And it's just such a fun ritual too. It's, it's like a nice little treat after dinner. Tastes absolutely delicious. I find there's no better feeling in the world than waking up well rested. The numbers don't lie. 93% of participants reported that Dream helped them get better sleep. So click the link in the video description or scan the QR code to shop Beam's biggest sale of the year and get up to 50% off. Seriously, if you're having trouble sleeping, now is the time to give it a try. The discount is auto applied, there's no code necessary. So thank you to Beam for sponsoring this video and for continuing to support this channel. And now back to the story. Favorite feeling in the world.
found an old school distributor set up to put in old blue. So while she still needed an engine rebuild this winter, she was running for the tail end of autumn. And after getting the old truck back, I installed a back rack and toolbox on the new truck, which was a dream come true. <laughs> and my mom stopped by the house here and there with Hudson. Different way. Yeah, this is nice because then the diagonal oh. is the diagonal that pops out. You crazy guy. Yeah. I like that. I think this looks really nice like this. Do you like it? Okay. And you want this? Um, <laughs> yeah. And you're happy with this green, or do you want me to try and get a darker green or more? Um, it's in the same family. And as the fields filled up with marshmallows, I took care of as many different things as I could around the property. If this doesn't work, then I got either some kind of wiring problem involving the starter. The starter could be failing, or it could just be a simple connection. To, to 
learn, but we're gonna start from the very basic. This is the clutch, just like on a car. With the tractor, you don't have a gas pedal, you have a throttle, there actually is a throttle. And there was one warm day when the foliage at the house was in full glory that I taught Allie how to drive the tractor. There's a lever here, you see that? Mm -hmm. Silver one, so you have to push the brake in and lift that up. You don't ever want to get out without it in neutral and the brake on. So you just put the clutch, can this thing stall? It can if you don't give it enough fuel. But you'll be able to feel it and it won't happen fast. The only way to learn is to simply just start doing it. The way you start this is you make sure you're in neutral. You make sure that the brake is on and locked like it is. Put the throttle up towards the top and turn the key. As soon as it starts to catch, stop turning it and then put your hand on the throttle. Actually do that with your left hand and do that with your right and just, you'll feel it. Like it's gonna turn on, it'll catch and then just like slowly adjust the throttle cause it's gonna rev way up fast cause you're all the way open. And while the list of projects at the new property is long and intimidating, all you can do is pick one thing at a time and do it right until it's finished. Something I had been waiting for all year finally happened. My best friend, who I call my brother, came home from Montana. I was so excited to show him everything that had happened in the last year. And so we met Noah at one of our favorite haunts. Wow. <laughs> wow. So that's, that's pretty sweet. So Noah and I each had our own apartments above this pub in the old mill town. And now that I live out in the hills full time, I don't come this way as often. So walking these streets feels like an old dream. certainly be by to catch the snowflakes and the street lamps and see the warm glow of the pub windows in the winter time. All right, enough waffling about... <laughs> waffling is an interesting thing. <laughs> and that night, we went back to Simon's childhood home where we stayed up late and caught up on everything, and it even snowed for a brief moment. Like... 
I spent so much time in this house as a kid, and most of the decorations are still the same. So being here always awakens some deep childhood feeling. prepping her Etsy store for the big holiday rush, and I was meeting up with Simon as much as I could to maximize our time together. And then Allie and I did something we'd been dying to do for about six months. a 23-year-old stove in mint condition from a sweet old lady on Marketplace. And we picked up my old snowmobiles after a good tune-up. Trap me in here? 
You requested it. See you later. Here goes these jeans. The important things. Like what? Are you even looking at what you're doing? <laughs> Turns out we had the things we needed to put the stove on. Which I'm not surprised, considering we've uh, probably bought every coupler and nipple and cap that Home Depot sells in every size over the past couple months. All we need now is this here electrical wire and we should have ignition and flame. I'll make sure none of this stuff gets caught. And with Old Blue running good, I woke real early with no plan except to drive southeast in search of the last bit of foliage. But what I ended up finding was even better. I was hours from home and the sun was just beginning to rise. I was driving through unfamiliar towns and there were countless greens and commons with leftover foliage in old churches and town halls. I was reminded of how it's gonna take a lifetime to even scratch the surface of all the hidden beauty in New England.
and it was a random pull-off I spotted where fall and winter collided. through the ice forest, observing the details, and getting excited for the winter months ahead. While I love traveling with Ali and with friends, there's something about a long solo drive that just feeds my soul. So I drove past some of the best stone walls I had ever seen and eventually ended up in a rare late autumn dream where the Christmas decorations stood amongst the falling leaves.
And after a beautiful morning of being reunited with my old stallion, it was a treat to come home to the house and see the wood stove pluming and Allie stepping out the door smiling. Soon the holidays would be here and the big slowdown would begin. Mm -hmm.